Hello everyone, thank you for watching the video. This is the first typewriter review I'll be doing in our new place. Um, this, we find ourselves in the garage. We've decided to create a bit of a work area here. We have a nice big table and two desk lamps, so excellent for lighting conditions. I have my tools here. Uh, this is also the area where I'll be doing the repairs to my machines and doing all the fixing up and everything. So. Um, yeah, I figured it might as well be the place where I will do my video reviews. Now, as you can see, we're sitting in direct sunlight and it's not doing the typewriter any justice, I'm afraid. So I'll be hanging up some blinds here, so I promise the lighting conditions will improve. But uh, to start off, I will be doing the first video review about this. It is a 1922 Remington 11. Now, if you're familiar with the 1920s, 1930s Remington standard typewriters, you will know that the Remington 11 is a little bit less common than, for example, the Remington 10 and the Remington 12. I'll get into what the major differences are. The basic grounds of difference are that this is an accountant's machine. It is not a standard office machine. Uh, the Remington 10, for those that don't know, was the earlier version, and the Remington 12 was the later version, and the Remington 10 also was the first front strike Remington standard typewriter, because all Remington standard typewriters from before that machine were all under strike. And if you don't know what that means, please refer to one of the videos on this channel because I've made a review of a Remington number 8 typewriter from 1907, which will feature this mechanism. So yeah, well, let's get into it. So as you can see, I installed some blinds and there's a world of difference uh, in lighting. This is way better. Um, turning towards the typewriter, the major difference between a Remington 10, a Remington 11, and a Remington 12 is that the 10 is the early version of the 12. And the Remington 11 was manufactured during um, the manufacturing years of the 10 and 12 together. And the reason for that was the Remington 11 offered some features that were not standard. These machines were sold as an accounting machine. And the major difference between a standard machine and an accounting machine was the system, because as an accountant you would be using typewriters to fill out forms. Now forms have individual slots on the page where you will go to to fill in the information. But with a typewriter, you would have to move the carriage over um, in order to do so. Now, you could either use the spacebar for that or the tabulator. But if you have on the same sentence multiple slots that you have to fill in and you wanted to move to a particular one, you couldn't do that by just, well, you could do it, but it would be a hassle to do it either by space or by standard tabulator because you would have to go past every single tab stop here on the back. So they came up with a system where, depending on where you sit, the the tabs, the particular tabs. If you would have, say, um, five slots, you would use the first five tab keys, or the tab poles here, which are on the back. So if you were to go to slot one, you would, you would set the right tab and you would press the one. If you were to go to the second slot on the page, you would set the uh, tab set and you would hit this. And then if you go to the third slot, you would hit the third key and so on and so on, that's how it works. And then the other difference is the big paper table here on the back, which is also a difference compared to the 10 and 12. And here on the back you see a bit more of the, this is the tabulator, and here is are the tab stops on this rail. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but I'll clip in a, a close-up of this, and you will see the, end of the, I think there is, how many are there, let me see. There's 10 tab pad poles, I think that's the word, that um, will stick out a certain distance, which will corroborate with the tab stops, which will also be stick out a certain distance in order to um, link to the correct pal. I hope, I, make, I hope it's clear enough, but that's how it works. Otherwise, this machine is pretty much the same. Um, I think they were also so, uh, sold with extra characters on the keyboard, um, but that was only an option back then. Otherwise, again, the machine is standard compared to a Remington 12, for example. It has the updated color selector here. Um, it has the updated carriage return arm, and otherwise, it's still a pretty much a Remington 10 because it doesn't have any side panels, and it never came with side panels, while the Remington 12 did. So, the standard functions apply. You have your carriage return arm, you have your backspace, you have a shift, and the shift lock. Then you have your tab stop and set, which is a little bit different on other machines. 
um, you have your margins here and you have some extra margins that you can set that one works and that one I have to find a new part for and you you have your line spacer here which I think do one two and three your carriage release your uh, these are your paper fingers and they have individual levers here to remove them from the platen your carriage release is over here that's the bell and your over here is another one now here in the center you have the margin release which works on both sides so that's that tab press that down you can move past it and then on the other side that tab stops the carriage you press the margin release and you move past that as well you have here your um, ribbon adjuster the ribbons on these machines are vertically installed or spools and they are installed here on the bottom underneath the top of the main frame this was also done on the 12th but again because they had side paneling they were obscured from view and then here on the back the um, inside this drum here which is a little bit hard to see but again I'll clip something in there is beads and the beads um, create a ballast for the carriage when you are tabulating so the carriage doesn't jump all over uh, all of a sudden over to the side it will gradually move over and it allows um, it reduces wear and tear on the mechanism here you have the major spring drum which is attached to a carriage belt attached to the carriage which all typewriters use um, now the tab clear button on this typewriter is here on the back next it's mounted onto the tabulator and it is a lever that you push in order to reset all your tab stops and then here we have your paper release lever so that's basically it um, these machines are pretty basic and um, even though this is an advanced model it, it comes down to pretty much the same technique that all typewriters use um, the, this is, like I said, was manufactured along with the Remington 10, which was the first Remington standard which featured front strike, um, a front strike mechanism compared to the upstrike mechanism um, that the model numbers before that offered. I have a video on this YouTube channel about the Remington 8, I mentioned that before, uh, which features the upstrike model. So have a look and see if that interests you. Um, some repairs that I did to this machine, the shift was out of alignment, so I don't know how it happened, but I had to disassemble the carriage and reassemble it, which fixed it. Uh, the bell didn't work because the spring had come off and um, there was something... Oh yes, one of the tab um, bars here in the back had come off its mounting and was sitting loose in there, so one of the tab buttons did not work and I fixed that as well. Now my overall opinion of these machines is that they're great. These are wonderful machines to use. Um, overall, they're very well built. They are very much alike the Underwood, but they are a bit more, they feel a bit more luxurious, like less clunky than the uh, classic Underwoods. They are definitely um, made with heavier materials. That doesn't necessarily make it better build quality because the design is a little bit awkward. Um, you definitely, you need more energy to use, uh, you need to use more force to use this machine. And of course, most Remington standards came with a right-handed carriage return arm, which is still something I have to get used to. But otherwise, yes, I mean, if you find one of these things and you're willing, you know, if you're looking for a machine to use frequently, um, this is definitely one I recommend. Anyways, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. I didn't want to keep it too long, so I apologize if I spoke a bit too, so, uh, too fast. Um, but if you have any questions about this machine or any questions in general, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching!